Hey guys and girls, Joe here. The guy who's really, really, really hoping I get to guest star in Tolarian Community College uh, for Shuffle Up and Play. I asked this week. Please hope it works out. But I'm actually here to talk about a decent fight night that had some controversies. Um, it was UFC fight night, Blanchfield versus Faro, and they were in Atlantic City, which means when they're not in the Apex, good rule of thumb if you know a card is going to be decent or not, is if is it in the Apex, they're not going to try. Is it not in the Apex? They might put in some effort. And for fight nights, they tend to put on effort. So we got effort tonight, and it wasn't honestly, outside of some controversies, thumbs up. You know what I mean? So, But enough talk. Let's get to the fights. Main event, Manon Fro never took French in high school, took Spanish. But she's taking on Aaron Blanchfield for a number one contenders match at flyweight. Two fighters who had a ton of hype on them, and here we go, just clashing it out. Only one can stand, kind of thing. I kind of like the booking of this. Um, admittingly, uh, I've been saying, like, I think last year is what I was like saying, like in a year, Aaron Blanchfield is going to be a champion. I might have even predicted that this year. But the more I've kind of thought about it the more I've kind of been like, you know, I think she needs like another year in the kitchen, in the, another year to cook kind of thing, but she's real good. She's real good. She can easily get a title shot now. Um, where Manon Fro, ton of hype on her, been waiting for a title shot for way too long, and so let's get this fight going. And this was a clean sweep for Manon Fro. Uh, super impressive in this fight, I thought. Uh, she was just stopping almost every grappling attempt that Aaron Blanchfield, who wants to kind of take her down and use her great submission grappling skills to just, de you know, she finishes everybody. She taps almost everybody out uh, as long as she can get you to the ground. And uh, she has a competent striking, but it's not the best. Um, but, you know, Faro stopped basically every attempt there was at it. And when she didn't, she either would reverse position or just get right back up to the feet and get where she has a massive, massive advantage. Honestly, just controlled the whole fight on, on the feet. Uh, really never let Blanchfield get started outside of, like, one guillotine attempt in the first round Blanchfield had that I remember watching and going, like, ah, that looks a little... Looks a, ugh, can't even talk. It looks a little tight. Um, but Manon, Manon Fro, she wins by unanimous decision, hopefully securing her a title shot against the winner of Alexa Grasso or Inshevchenko, uh, which is somehow getting a third fight. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like the only reason I'm kind of going like, why is it getting a third fight? Because I know for a fact, if Shevchenko wins, they're just not, are they going to do a fourth fight? No, they're not. But like, we're okay with, we're okay with Grasso, like Grasso beating the champ. And then, uh, it was a draw, but you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Why is this a third fight? I'm ready for this division to move on, but whatever, man, I could be my Valentina dislike kind of shining through but for Blanchfield I don't think this is a derailment of the hype train at all uh, I think she was probably rushed through to this pretty quick I don't think it's a derailment at all of the side train she's fine um she's super super tough because she took some great shots in this fight we kept going was even trying to go for the finish in the last round um very destructive ground game mega finisher on the ground she just struggles to take down some flyweights down, like she's, you know, obviously she struggled here against Faro to take her down, and I don't think she took Talia Santos down, um, I think she just kind of, like, had to lay and pray, or, like, Holly Homer a bit, which kind of sucked for me, because I'm an Aaron Blanchfield fan, but, you know, it's one of those things where you kind of, what are you going to do, you can't, you can't take her down, um, maybe you could do her and Macy Barber, Macy Barber, she's trying to pick fights with anybody, ranked above her, uh, or, her, or her and Rose Namajunas, which I don't, admittingly, I did like when at the time of writing this script, but I, I don't like talking about it now, I really don't like that, but maybe you could do it. Um, I, I, I think in a year, you could easily see her being champion. Like, I, I think within a year and a half, what, like 16 months or so? 18 months? Yeah, 18 months, my math sucks. <laughs> um, 18 months or so, I think you can easily see her being champion. I don't think she'll be champion this year, obviously, you know, at this point, you know, you lose, it's kind of, unless, like, it's, like, a Sean Strickland situation where she comes in on short notice, she, yeah, you know, and she wins, kind of thing, but I don't think so, um, necessarily this year, but next year, 110% possibility.
But instead of talking about any of the other fights on this card in detail, I want to talk about um, Ipokes, because two fights in a row got ruined by Ipokes. So first we had Nur Sultan Ruziboev. He got a nasty Ipoke over Cedric Dumas, uh, and then he went, as Dumas is going to complain to the ref, like, hey, I just got poked in the eye, uh, Ruziboev goes for the kill and gets a really dubious TKO win. And then when the translator... When, like, you know, Joe, you know, they asked him, like, hey, like, Michael Bisping asked him, hey, like, so what's up with the eye poke? And he goes, no, 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 no. I just punched him. And as we were all watching him, like, claw his face like that, like, come on. You know, it was pretty rough. Um, then in the very next fight, Chris Weidman, he was putting on a show. I thought he was beating Bruno Silva 3-0, to zero, basically, at least in the third round when it was stopped. Uh, but then he does this really slick one-two eye poke combo while trying to stiff arm and like paw away and then throw the left hook uh, counter, and it knocks Bruno Silva down and he puts on the pours on the pressure and gets a TKO win. Um, it really puts down his pretty good performance. And you know, I'm just gonna say this. You know, maybe I've been wrong about John Jones uh, because I mean, maybe he is a bigger like name in the sport than I realize because he didn't fight tonight, but. His influence on MMA was definitely felt tonight, you know. Uh, my God, all these eye pokes were wild. Um, so, eye pokes ruining a fight, it isn't new. It, it isn't a new thing to have an eye poke ruin a fight. Um, but it's a, it's a pretty good card where we had a pr legitimately very fun and cool feel-good story, like a comeback story for Chris Weidman, uh, kind of ruined you know, like it was originally a TKO. They turned it into a technical decision, which Chris Wynn won. A lot of people still think it should have been a DQ. I think it should have been a no contest, um, admittingly. But DQ maybe. I think I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that's where like the precedent is, DQ or technical decision. But, ah, man, it sucks. Really sucks. Um, and this is what really sucks about it is apparently, I, 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 haven't, I haven't tested these gloves out myself. I've always wanted to. But they're just expensive. They're really expensive. Um, but uh, it, it's like a glove problem. I, I've, I've like worn like you know those UFC gloves you can buy. They suck. They suck. And fighters have who wear these gloves and have a better sense of what a good glove is and a bad glove have said they suck for years. That these gloves are terrible, right? And we've been complaints, complaints, complaints. And there's been like their excuse has always been there's no legitimate alternative though. So. There actually is a legitimate alternative. And Trevor Whitman, coach of Rose Namajunas, uh, he was a striking coach for Kamaru Usman, um, Corey Sanhagen, Justin Gaethje, like, and he has, well, he was coach of Rose Namajunas. I, I heard they, they their camp split up. Um, but in, regardless, he has a glove that he made. He knitted it himself. He, like, worked on it, the whole leather and all that noise. And apparently it's very, very comfortable to, like, just have, like, a, you know, normal hand. Like, doing that in a UFC glove is really uncomfortable. It's really, and your hands kind of, like, have to do that. It, it's awkward. UFC gloves suck. Um, <laughs> they're really, or you're doing this. That's, like, actually the default pose. So having to do this is, like, really awkward for grappling and stuff. But these gloves, apparently, very comfortable. Um, and they've, there is no eye poking, essentially, like, with these gloves. Like, un without intent. Like, you need to intent, intentionally eye poke a guy. John Jones, watch out, bud. No excuses with these anymore. Um, and he offered it to the UFC, and he was going to offer it to all the major promotions. But the UFC is the best way to kind of show if it can work in the biggest pool to test it. And UFC said, yeah, we love this glove and, like, our testing's with it. We want this glove, but we want the patent. And Trevor Winman wants this glove to go become the new standard, not just a patent. It isn't a money thing for him. And that's disgusting. That's a disgusting practice by the UFC. I, I, I legitimately hate it. We have a fix, and it's legitimately disgusting. And because the UFC just wants to make money off of it. Super greedy. They offered Trevor Whitman, apparently, a, uh, a, a metric truckload <laughs> of, uh, of cash for the patent to own it. And so it wasn't like a money thing for him, even. It would have just been, we just want us to have it when it's... You know, share the gift with the world instead. But anyways, for the rest of the card, uh, Joaquin Buckley in the coming event got a TKO win over Vicente Luque. Kyle Nelson, he did get a standing TKO win over Bill Algio, which uh, I admit I'm okay with this finish. 
Um, I know there were some complaint, complaints with it with Bill Algio and cl- very much complaining about it, but I'm a fighter safety first guy. He was hurt pretty, pretty bad. He got dropped like instantly in the fight, basically, too. But Chidi Injigawani got a, a split decision win over Reese McKee, who I actually thought had a pretty good start when with his boxing in the first round. But then he just went right to Holly Homing and Holly homed himself right into a decision loss. So good job for Chidi Injigawani. Uh, Nate Landwehr, big fan favorite. He got a, gets a great first round KO win over Jamal Emmers, and it was super sick. Really cool, like post fight interviews. Such a lot of energy. That guy's a blast and a half. Uh, Verna Jan the Roba got a decision win over Luby Goodness, or Godness. I was that that name is like like just out of my realm of Spanish even. So that one even throws me off. Uh, uh, Julio Arce got a big stomping win over Herbert Burns with a TKO win. And Dennis Bazukja got a big, T- a big TKO win over Connor Matthew, as did Ibo Alson over Anton Turkolj. Then, probably my contender for KO of the year, and Jacob Malkoon getting, it's probably one of my favorite KOs of all time, admittingly, at least of this year, probably my favorite KO this year, for sure, over Andre Petrovsky, where Petrovsky basically uh, KO'd himself by diving for a single and headbutting. Uh, Malcone's hip or his knee. I, I can't remember the shot. Like the angle I saw was really weird. It's incredibly, incredibly like one to one reminiscent of when Ilir Latifi knocked himself out shooting for this, uh, a takedown on Ryan Bader, who was just walking forward, uh, plotting it. And it's it's amazing. It's fantastic. Basically, he knocked himself out, went stanky leg, and fell down, and Malcone got the TKO win. Uh, Oscar. Wonderful stuff. Uh, and finally, uh, Kowlin Logren got a decision win over Angel Pancheco. And, but that's it for me. And if you celebrate it, happy Easter. You know, uh, I know, I'm hope you, hopefully you get to spend time with family and loved ones. I know I am personally. It's what I'm doing pretty soon. Um, also, I will be back next week for another Apex card that I'm admittingly not as excited for as I am this one, or as I was this one. Uh, of course, there's another retro review on the way. I'm actually, once I get done with my family obligations, I'm going to be shooting retro review today. I would have shot it last week, but some tooth pain, some sick days and stuff like that. So, and I just didn't want to talk. Um, so, you know, no go. So I got to shoot it today. Um, also, if you want to support us, join the Patreon where you get exclusive content. You get content early. There's a retro review up on there right now. Uh, and as a bonus, you can request anything you want for me to, as long as I can, as long as I can get my hands on it, you can request it for me to review on the retro review series. We'd love to do it. It's so much fun. I love getting the fan, uh, doing the fan request. It's amazing. I'm Joe with the INC. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.